I'm going to put some shelves together. These are floating shelves. And these happen to be 42 inches, roughly. There's going to be two of them. And I thought maybe I would show you guys this way of doing floating shelves. I, I do them different ways each time. Um, you know, I, I change it up a little bit. So right now I'm doing this laminated approach. And this is going to yield me um, about six and a half inches once I put this front on wide. And so this is three quarter, three quarter inch and three sixteenths, that total distance. These pieces, if you see right there, two and 11 sixteenths rips, and you can see how much big they are. So they're a little bit big. It's about a eighth of an inch. So about two and nine sixteenths thickness for the total thickness here. Now, this is a really strong shelf doing it like this when you laminate these guys. And um, it's uh, very, very strong when you put it on the wall. So to make it nice and neat, what I do is I actually put these pieces together. I glue them up. I glue these pieces up. And then what I do, I'm not like too crazy about the amount of glue that I get on the edge because this is all going to be covered with these, these pieces there. So it's going to look like that when it's all done. Okay. So here's what I have to do. Um, put these together after I glue them up and um, I make them a little oversized and then I actually trim them uh, about a quarter inch off of each end and about a quarter inch off of each side to yield me the size I want. And then what that does is it gets this perfect, right? So now I've got a perfectly flush uh, and square end and front and the back is parallel. When you do these kind of things, sometimes you can get a little twisted and you don't even realize it. So that really helps. Um, and in this particular case, I had to trim the ends on my uh, miter saw because it was actually a little too thick for my sliding uh, table saw sled, about a, a quarter inch too thick or so. So um, I just took it over to the miter saw and cut them there, and that was fine. So now that I've got those trimmed up, now I have to glue these guys to the ends and these to the fronts. And I always glue the good side. So this would be the good side up. And this is the good side. So when you're ripping them, this is the top. That means there's no tear out here and there's no tear out there, right? So when I put these together, I actually put them like that. And so I've got a really clean edge you can see this. There's no tear out. You can see that. And when that thing is glued, clamped up, glued, it's great. And now you might wonder how I fasten these guys to each other. Well, from the other side, from the back, the bottom side, I nail. You don't have to get carried away. It's just eight nails there. And uh, so I nail it into this piece, right? And I nail this piece into the top. So the first thing is to nail this piece to this piece. And then this is the last piece to put on. So it gets nailed. And now where these go on the job depends on how high these shelves are. If these shelves are really high, I put these holes on top because you can't see that. And I leave the clean part, the visible part, which would be the bottom of most of the shelves. If you look up at shelves, usually all you can see is the bottom. So I want those to be the cleanest ones. So now the only time it's different is it's usually the bottom shelf 
and that one would get holes would be actually on the bottom because you can see the top. So, and obviously the finishers are going to fill all those, but still, I always like to do that. Um, so, I've got that, and I've got my cleats are over here. And these guys are just simply one and three sixteenths thick, and they just slide in to the slot. Now, what I do is because I want this to slide in easily and I want there to be room for glue, what I do is I actually take, um, I haven't yet, this is the exact size of the filler. I take this and I'm gonna um, run it on the uh, table saw and or the joiner or the planer, whatever you have. Do a little bit on each side, that way it won't twist. And then when I put this in, and I put glue on this, there'll be room for the glue, because you want the glue to really hit the uh, inside of the piece here. So this piece will be on the wall. Take this and you push it on, essentially, and you'll notice that when it's all said and done, and this piece goes in, there's a little, there's a little space, okay? That little space is, uh, necessary because when I put this on the wall I have to scribe it and, I'm, and that means I have to take off a little material here if it's a messed up wall and it's bumpy and wavy so I'll scribe this part to the wall which means I have that much room that I can scribe up to and um, I won't need to scribe it that much for a piece this long most likely probably about a quarter inch maybe. So I'll scribe the top and the bottom so it fits nice and tight. I take, put it on edge there, and I find where the studs are, and I take a drill bit and I drill a hole in here, 16 inch on center, whatever the house studs are, and I figure out where I can get, you know, whatever it is going to be, however many studs I can hit. And I will put construction adhesive on this as well and then secure it to the wall making sure this is plumb I mean level and then once I put this on the wall it's secure and then I slide this on it with construction adhesive as well so it's going to get lots of adhesive and uh, this is going to be a permanent fixture in the house when you're putting these together to, to um, Make sure that it's tight and it won't come undone while the glue is setting. So, because you know, this amount, it wants to come down a little bit uh, with gravity. So if you take it and just give it one pin, um, that thing is not gonna come tilting down at all. And it works really, really well. All right, so first thing I have to do is Glue that guy up. So I'm just going to take some yellow glue, and this is tight bond. Although it shows it's red, I, I actually use the tight bond too. Um, I just have these bottles that are really old. I need to get new bottles actually. And then um, for these, what I like to do is I'll put. Um, a little something underneath this to raise it up and that way when I put these pieces on touching the countertop this piece will actually be raised up so I'll end up with a little lip at the bottom which is what I want um, and then when I'm done with glue up and it's all dry I can take it off and flush trim it and or sand it flush so um, that's what I want so sometimes in order to raise it up I just take a um, sandpaper like this. This is a perfect um, thing to put underneath it. This is my six inch. I'll take it and it's really simple. Just take the sandpaper, put it underneath, and then you'll see how it's raised up. 
Now, when I put this on here, you can see it's touching. So what that's gonna do is it's gonna give me a little bit of a lip. You can see it. See that? Little lip at the bottom, little lip at the top. And that's gonna give me the perfect amount of sanding to remove that uh, and on the bottom side so it's nice and tight. So I just need two or three, I'll probably put three because it's, once we get the clamps on there, I'm gonna make sure, make sure that this piece stays above the uh, workbench. So I'll put one sanding disc there, there, that'll be three. Now, this glue is, is super strong. When you have it like this glued up, it's uh, really, really strong. Make sure that you glue it up on a flat surface and um, you know to keep it flat don't push down as you're doing this you want to make sure that you're not like pushing down as you're nailing these things on too hard um, because it, if your surface isn't perfectly flat it might actually curve with the surface around i like to do the uh, ends first get those positioned nicely and then i will take the uh, front and um, Put glue on the whole thing so that it really fills in that end right there so when i put it together i want to see that glue come out there and then i want to see glue squeeze out all along the top to make sure that's a really really nice tight joint Took these out of the clamps finally. It's been sitting here for a couple of days. All right, these things look good. Um, so you can kind of see what's going on inside there. Obviously there's a open cavity. This is where the cleat is gonna go into. So now you can see the lip I was talking about that I need to remove. I made this piece bigger than it needs to be. So I've got a lip on both sides. sides have the lips and then um, when I glued them up I made sure that this was going to be nice and tight that that front edge that's what I wanted that glue squeeze out and this is looks good Okay, these are the floating shelves. I just flush trimmed them. Um, and they look great, but this is not a uh, flush trim and paint type of thing. You have to flush trim it and then you have to sand it because uh, no matter what, you, you gotta blend it even better than the, the uh, router bit does. So the router bit does a good job. I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and sand these guys, make sure that they're all nice and and um, I'm going to use my 6 inch sander, the 5 millimeter stroke, and that's it. I'll just hit it. 